Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Secretary. Thank you and welcome. As I mentioned, uh, I would like to speak about where we are with the Coast Guard budget and, and, and more specifically to that point, uh, icebreakers and the Arctic. I think we recognize that as an Arctic nation, we, we have certain responsibilities, obligations, and, and icebreakers are right up there. And when you have about one and a half, and one is in Antarctic uh, almost full time, uh, it really is an imperative. And I'm very pleased that the administration has acknowledged that in, in this year's budget. We've been working with you uh, on this for, for a while, and so making sure that we have that support uh, for not only moving towards an icebreaker, but uh, acceleration of bringing that icebreaker online, as the President has outlined, I think is, is critically important. You also know that I have been a staunch defender of the Coast Guard at, at all levels and in making sure that Thank they you. have the assets that they need to do the job. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I want assurances from you, Mr. Secretary, that we do have adequate funding in this year's budget to ensure the President's deadline of, of awarding construction of this new icebreaker by 2020, while at the same time we're on track with keeping the National Security Cutter, the Offshore Patrol Cutters, and the Fast Response Cutters acquisition programs on time and on budget. Because what I would hate to see is that we're, we're sacrificing once at the expense of the other. We need both, and, and the recapitalization effort that you've spoken to is critically important for our country. So if you can speak to that. Um, the answer is yes. Good. Both with respect to the current year and the request for the next year. I am very pleased that in our request there is $150 million for the design of the new icebreaker. As you know, because of the increasing commercialization in the Arctic and for national security reasons, we need a second heavy icebreaker beyond the Polar Star. We have the Polar Sea, which is not operational. And so we need a second heavy icebreaker in addition to the lighter ones we already have. Alongside of that, we are still continuing with the recapitalization of the FRCs, building more FRCs. In this budget request, there is a request for four. We're moving forward with the offshore patrol cutter. I expect that we will make a selection for the contractor sometime this year. For the OPC, there is, I believe, 100 million to continue with that program. And as you know, this year we are tasked and given funding to build a ninth national security cutter. So all three of those programs continue and are moving forward. I think that is a good thing. And we have the money for the icebreaker. Some people are concerned that we might be moving too fast, but our goal. They haven't talked to me. <laughs> they haven't talked to you. That was what I was met with at this morning's House Appropriations meeting. Fair. And um, we believe that we can stay on track and we should stay on track with respect to the $150 million this year so that we can begin production by 2020. Well, I appreciate that response and know that uh, you, you've got an ally in me in terms of, of how we can ensure people understand the imperative <clears throat> of building this out and, and, and doing it quickly. We recognize that it is expensive, but we also recognize that it's the Coast Guard study that it be not just one icebreaker, but there actually be three polar icebreakers and three, um, three smaller icebreakers. So making sure we have a trajectory going forward on that is going to be uh, a, an issue for us as well. I want to switch now to national security uh, cutter in the program. You mentioned the uh, the approval to build out the ninth uh, NSC, which for us from an Arctic perspective is absolutely key. Mm -hmm. We have seen national security cutters uh, every season in, in, the, in the summer up in the Arctic as we're seeing um, different traffic, different, different folks poking around up there that you probably wouldn't anticipate. And knowing that we have the capabilities of these NSCs up there is, is very critical. The question for you this afternoon is, home porting of this ninth national security cutter, or, or even another NSC that's currently slated for elsewhere. I think we need to be looking to a home port that is closer to the Arctic. 
Right now, the closest is Alameda, California. It's a long haul from Alameda, California to get up into the Arctic, into the Beaufort, into the Chukchi, into the areas in the Gulf uh, uh, and, and the Bering Sea. So recognizing what is happening in the Arctic and, and Coast Guard's need for expanded presence, can you comment on the prospects for a national security cutter to be stationed in Alaska? As you know, I'm sure, Senator, we have a process within the Coast Guard that the Commandant runs for determining home ports. Um, and we're a ways off from the completion of the ninth cutter, so it would probably be premature for me at this stage to comment on whether or not it should be ported in the Arctic region, but I certainly understand the concern, and I certainly understand that Alameda is a long way away from the Arctic region. But you too recognize that that Coast Guard's role, their mission truly has, has expanded dramatically as we are seeing greater activity within the Arctic region. As, as the Commandant has said, it's like discovering a new ocean. And the Coast Guard is charged with responsibility over that yes. new ocean. So how, how we make sure that we can we can stage these critical assets in places where they can be most effective, most impactful, is important. So I would, I understand that there is a process, uh, but I would also encourage uh, you within the department to, to look critically at the benefits of, of, of home porting closer to where that activity is going to be. But